Whiskey is defined as a spirit made from malted grain, but we know it's so much more than that. Whiskey is passion. It's our history and it's our community. Join us as we explore what it means to be a part of the whiskey culture. Hey guys, this is Greg with Whiskey Culture. And I'm Fred from Buffalo Trace Distillery. We're gonna take you for a little walk around here show you some of the history, and show you some of what we're doing to expand. We're honoring tradition, embracing change. Excellent, let's get started. Buffalo Trace Distillery is a name that every whiskey enthusiast is familiar with. Today, they're one of the biggest names in bourbon, producing over 3 million cases a year. And the distillery hosts over 300,000 visitors annually but the seeds for this legendary distillery were sown back in 1792, the year that Kentucky became the 15th state in the Union. Commodore Richard Taylor built a sturdy stone one-story home that's still on the distillery grounds today. In 1870, Colonel E.H. Taylor Jr. purchased a distillery near his family home, naming it the OFC for Old Fashioned Copper. This reflected his belief that distilling with traditional copper stills produced a superior whiskey. George T. Stagg bought the OFC distillery from E.H. Taylor in 1878 and renamed it after himself in 1904. It was, in turn, purchased by Shenley and then Sazerac, before being rebranded into the iconic Buffalo Trace distillery we all know and love in 1999. During those years, legendary figures in whiskey history were woven into Buffalo Trace's history, with figures like Albert Blanton and Elmer T. Lee taking up significant roles in the distillery. We were happy to find that Fred, longtime tour guide and walking encyclopedia of all things Buffalo Trace, would be our guide. Fred was actually the first person to take us around the distillery years ago, and we found he hadn't lost any of his passion or good humor. We have, uh, we have over 100 buildings here on over 440 acres. We have a little over a billion barrels aging in 28 different aging warehouses on site. Everything we do is on site, every step of the operation. Uh, this age, our motto here is uh, honor tradition, embrace change. Well, this aging warehouse here, Warehouse C, was built in 1885. Our first stop was the Elmer T. Lee Clubhouse. Built in 1935 by Albert Blanton and named in honor of the 64 years Elmer T. Lee spent in service to Buffalo Trace, the clubhouse served as a place for the distillery to host the community, and a place for these looming legends to kick back and enjoy a dram with friends and family. Maintaining its identity and purpose. The historic venue is still available to rent for private events or weddings. That is, provided you want your event at one of the most historic landmarks in the country. Next, Fred took us to see the fermentation room. And honestly, it's a monument to the supply of whiskey that Buffalo Trace pumps out. Over 7,000 gallons of the stuff each day. Every one of the 12 monolithic fermenters adorning the room can hold around 92,000 gallons of mash. And I can't overstate how massive these truly are. After fermentation, the mash is distilled down into white lightning and tested for quality. Once that distillate has been approved by the head distiller, the whiskey is then entered into 55 gallon barrels. They are sealed, rolled out, and then put into a warehouse for aging. And that's exactly where Fred took us next. Warehouse C to be precise. The same building that ages Buffalo Trace's coveted E.H. Taylor expressions. Warehouse C has been aging whiskey for more than 130 years, and the narrow wooden rows store more than 24,000 white oak barrels. In November of 2009, we made a batch in the micro still. We have four barrels of this aging in two different uh, rickhouses. This barrel is labeled W.L. Weller, filled January 5th of 2010. All of our wheat bourbon barrels are labeled Weller, but Pappy Van Winkle and W.L. Weller are the same recipe. Different aging, but same mash bill. 
And speaking of mash bills, Buffalo Trace has over 15 whiskeys and they all come from one of four recipes. The majority of their whiskeys fall either under mash bill one or mash bill two. And now there's a weeded in rye mash bill as well. However, the exact recipes are closely guarded secrets, but that hasn't stopped many enthusiasts from trying their best to decipher what they could be. Walking around the distillery and taking in all that history can leave you thirsty. Luckily, Buffalo Trace has a lineup for you. You'll get to try some of their flagship signature bourbons like Buffalo Trace, Eagle Rare, and E.H. Taylor. You'll even get a chance to make a bourbon root beer float. And when you're done, you'll exit through the gift shop where you'll be able to find all manner of Buffalo Trace themed goodies to bring back with you. Definitely try Freddy's root beer and some of the bourbon chocolate truffles. And if you're lucky, you might even find some Blanton's on the shelf. As always, our time at Buffalo Trace was amazing. We had a blast seeing Fred again, catching up with the team, and seeing how the expansions were coming along. If you're hitting the bourbon trail, Buffalo Trace is one stop you can't afford to miss. Thank you for spending time with us down here at the Rick House, brought to you by Whiskey Culture. This show wouldn't be possible without your dedication to the whiskey community and continued support. Don't forget to like the video and subscribe to learn more about the world of whiskey.